The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and we got a mixed market right now. Pretty calm action overnight as has been the case since about last week, right? We jump over to the S&Ps right now flat to the tick at 42.74. You know, the NASDAQ 100 barely in the green yesterday. Quite a sell off for those tech companies yesterday, man. We'll jump over to some of those FANG stocks. NASDAQ 100 up by 28 points, 14,000. 358, you see the sell off yesterday. We were at 14,000, what was I, six something? 14,675. So you're talking about 315 points to the downside from where we were yesterday. And you were approaching 14,250 overnight. Dow, negative by 49 points right now, 33,661. And you got the Russell. Talk about a dichotomy of differences, man. Check out the action of the Russell, especially versus the NASDAQ 100. You talk about a difference going on. The Russell this morning, negative by six. A little bit of a re reversal of yesterday's action. In terms of ye yesterday, you really had those tech stocks trading lower. This morning so far, we got tech stocks barely in the green. Well, you have the Russell pulling back when the Russell was the one accelerating higher yesterday. Crude, up a bit, up 21 pennies at 72.73. Gold catching a bit this morning, two-way action uh, in terms of where we were yesterday. You accelerate to below 1960. This morning, we're back to 1973. Anytime you, add, you got gold moving, you can expect we got some currency action moving. We got the dollar index, right? What do we got? We got a weaker dollar, so you got strength in the gold contract, and that is going to coincide with lower yields. Had to recalibrate my main. So we got higher price in the 10-year. Lower yields, all right, and uh, even as I jump around, you jump to the two-year, okay, you get a spike in there as well. So we have higher price, lower yields, that leading to a weaker dollar, the weaker dollar leading to potentially a slight bid in some of those growth companies out there with the NASDAQ up 25 points. Economic data this morning, we jump over to it, jobless claims. I don't know about the word surge here, surge to 261,000 highest since October of 2021. I mean, that's a while ago, okay? But all things considered, man, the market was looking for 235. Uh, continuous claims fell to 1.76 million. Aren't continuous claims supposed to be going up if we're really having a tough economy that's putting the cramps, clamps on inflation? The report highlights a labor market that while re largely resilient is starting to show signs of cooling is how they put it. I'd be real careful putting much into this one, man. Uh, on an adjusted basis, claims rose to 219,000 in the week ended June 3rd. Let's see, we got applications led in Ohio, California, Minnesota. Data can be che uh, choppy. Yeah, I would put it lightly, man. The four week moving average is 237,000 folks, okay? And we are up at two, what was the number, 261. The four-week average is about 240. The numbers get choppy with variance. I would just not put too much into that number of 260,000 at a time when we're adding 300 plus thousand jobs a month, right? So keep it in context, man. This number, not very important, usually, especially if you don't get any outliers. And I don't put that one in outlier at all. Slightly above the four-week average, but 261,000 where we are, man. With unemployment at 3.7%, yeah, you better believe 
that's still a strong economy, okay? That is not going to tame inflation, and, and the numbers have not surged. I would not use that number in a, in, a, in a correct capacity to encompass that number. Highest since October 2021, though, that is the headline you'll see, and that is accurate. All right, let's talk a little bit of crypto to kick off the program here. Uh, that's not the one I wanted to. was watching that one earlier. Let's just pause that video. But we jumped to Coinbase. We're going to talk a little bit of trades here. So Coinbase today... You get the acceleration on Tuesday. You hold basically where this thing accelerated back to on Wednesday. This morning, we're slightly in the red, but all things considered, no huge action considering what's going on. But check out some of these trades, man. Now, there's a couple sides of this, okay? I saw one uh, Twitter account, Unusual Whales. Maybe if you are familiar with it in the den, right? They track big trades, uh, the unusual large trades of whales, etc. And I think one of the trades highlighted a Coinbase trade that was made on Monday, okay? One day ahead of when the SEC sues them. The problem there is that we all should have seen the writing on the wall, man, on Monday. We should have seen it. When they were coming after Binance, very good possibility they come for Coinbase as well. They did that on Tuesday. But boy, you want to talk about some numbers, man. There's, there's a reasonable way to trade options that you might be able to avoid detection. And then there's the unreasonable way where you just load up minutes before the news breaks. And how about this one? All right, so Coinbase, right? Now this one goes back to right before Monday, before Binance came out, which is the kicker. 10.35 a.m. Monday morning, someone always knows, man, okay? 10.30, because people know. We live in a world where, you know, you always see something like, oh, to avoid human error. If humans are involved in anything, there's always gonna be human error. If information is possessed by humans that is worth millions of dollars there's always going to be the incentive folks to use that information to collect those millions always okay the incentive is there it doesn't mean it's going to happen but you have to be aware that it's there and it usually does happen if enough people have that information it's just too tempting especially when you're talking about crypto but doing it with options traded in a regulated environment that's a little bit dicier man so on monday at 10 36 in the morning 4,800 contracts of Coinbase's $50 puts expiring Friday hit the tape. Stock was trading at almost $62. Now, man, <coughs> excuse me, you talk about out-of-the-money options. Okay, these things were trading for 18 pennies each. 24 minutes later, at 11 in the morning, the SEC announced it was suing Binance. Now, Coinbase, rightfully so, sold off on that news. Okay, now we're going to zoom in on the action. Here is Monday. There's about $10.30, $62 when they got sold. Okay, now here's the kicker, though. They're $50 puts, man. Okay, they're $50 puts is what you have going on. So the stock, of course, it accelerated. They got to about a dollar, it says, on Monday. They got as low as $5, maybe? Now, let's see where they are. We'll pull them up. What are they talking about here? They're $50 puts expiring on Friday. It's going to be interesting that you insider trade and you don't even make any money. As in, check it out, man. The $50 puts are only at 50 cents, man. So this trader put up $86,000, okay? Now, this article's got to catch up here because they're going off prices of where this thing was at on the spike low. Yeah, it reached $5.65 on that spike low on... When you got down to, and rightfully so, you almost had enough intrinsic value there. Uh, I wonder if they sold them off. I'm sure you can figure that out. But nonetheless, pretty remarkable you go that far out of the money for that large of a position. I don't know, maybe it's some type of hedge, but you're talking about almost a $100,000 option trade with five days of exposure, 20% out of the money, 24 minutes before the SEC was handing down an indictment of Binance with Coinbase to follow, and uh, they went too far out of the money, man. Yeah, simple as that. Too far out of the money for Coinbase. Remarkable, nonetheless. When we come back, folks, we're talking markets. We're talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the TD Ameritrade Network. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We jump over to the VIX volatility index this morning. 1411. We got a new recent low of 1377 yesterday. It's pretty remarkable that we're in a, a new era right now, that we have been hiking since March of 2022. You're talking about 15 months ago, folks, and you can make the case that we knew the hikes were coming even before that, right? And so we've been in a Fed is hiking environment for the better part of a, approaching a year and a half, year and a quarter, whatever you want to call it. Very different time when there was so much up in the air in terms of the pace of the hikes, where they're going. We've now kind of adjusted to the fact that we are at the rates we're at right now, and the market's handling it. The kicker is inflation hasn't gone down yet. Keep that one in the back of your mind because every bit of optimism that everything hangs on is contingent on inflation going down at some point, folks. Okay, We're not going to have a market that's skyrocketing higher. If you have inflation crushing the buying power of American consumers, at some point that is going to catch up if they don't get it under control. But right now, stay in the current. It's not happening just yet, man. And the VIX is showing you the signs of that. Now, we get CPI data next Tuesday, okay, Tuesday morning. That's an important data point. If it doesn't shock the market with something, then the writing's pretty much on the wall that we get a hike, uh, a pause. We get a pause next Wednesday, and then we'll see what happens towards the end of July on their next meeting. But if you take that in stride, where does this market go, right? Where What is the impetus to head higher or lower when we're in a bit of a status quo right now? We're going to be watching the economic data. We'll see where we go in July. We just got some slight action in notes and bonds when you look at the numbers that we got this morning um you jump to for example the 10 year right we got a little bit of higher price lower yield what's that talking about well that's talking about you got a little bit of jobless claims we have an uptick highest level what since october 2021 
you look at all of those, it says, okay, maybe we don't go as high as we maybe thought, right? Maybe we get a pause and maybe we start seeing an uptick in these jobless numbers. We start seeing a downtick in the jobs created, et cetera. But there's a lot of optimism built into that. So be careful, man. And there's two sides of every argument to be made, okay? Because one side of it is there is an extreme competition for capital right now. Uh, I'll pull up the CD rates. A two-year ladder is above 5% right now. That's a staggering risk-free rate of return. A five-year ladder is approaching 5% right now. Again, a staggering risk-free rate of return when you consider where the S&P would have to be. And I've done this before on different shows, okay? So what you have is you have competition for capital right now, and that's not going away in the next year or two. Not happening. Just not happening. Banks need money. They need to shore up their balance sheets. You're going to have commercial real estate having a problem over the next year or two, no matter what happens with the Fed. Okay, and we will be okay because now finally the Fed does have some ammunition to come back with, at least to come back with if we face some hardship in the economy. One of the biggest worries for so long was that the Fed was holding 0% at a time when, man, the economy was doing pretty well. What was going to happen if we turned lower? We weren't going to have the ammunition to cut like we normally would to spur economic activity. Well, that's not the case now, man. We're going to have it, okay? The banks have to get over their capital deal, though. There is a real issue right now going on with banks, with their capitals. Inflation is not going away instantly. It's going to persist. The inflation persisting is going to cause interest rates to remain elevated. Interest rates remain elevated is going to be a competition for capital in those banks. And then you add commercial real estate come and do over the next two to three years that's going to put the squeeze on the balance sheets even more. So what's going to happen? You're going to have CD rates staying somewhat elevated. And if CD rates stay elevated, there is going to be a competition for capital in this market. I mean, think about how well the market's held up at 4,300 and think about how much money is not in equities right now and is put in money market funds or CDs, et cetera, right? That money can come back. So that's the real impetus here in terms of when the Fed does, if they need to cut, okay, they're going to suck the free money, risk-free rate of return out of things. And the real kicker here is, is if they suck that rate down fast enough, it will ease the commercial real estate problem as well, causing banks not to be so strapped on the balance sheets. So there is a real deal here, man, in terms of where we go, what the Fed can do. But for the next year or two, I really see that we are in a place where inflation is in the forefront here. But for the next like month or two, we're in a sweet spot here with the VIX under 14, with the market saying, you know what, we're going to give this a chance. Stocks are doing well. The Fed's going to give lag a chance. And that's like a best case scenario for the stocks, at least in the short term. Longer term, though, you go out a year or two. What happens if inflation gets sticky, man? Because I think it is a little sticky and I think it's a real gamble to pause or skip right now. The only disclaimer there is that do the banks, uh, does Chairman Powell really know more? And he does about the stress that banks are in. And maybe this is a combination saying, man, if we keep hiking, if we go to six or seven percent, uh, and we got these commercial real estate properties coming up due, and you have higher interest rates for properties that are worth less, those are going to default and it's going to cause some real stress. And that's a real possibility. So I think they're trying to thread the needle here. And boy, it's dangerous when you're trying to thread a needle where you are 15 months into a hiking cycle and we have inflation potentially edging up between four to five percent, right? That's quite a needle to say, you know what, we're confident enough with inflation approaching even 5% and going up on a month-over-month -month basis that we're just going to let the lag play out. Because they tried to do that on the flip side of this, okay? The word transitory was basically that it's going to revert to the norm. There's lags in this economy that are going to cause inflation to go away. Just let it catch up. And we saw how that went, man. So keep that on the horizon a little bit longer term as well. Because this VIX, this market, this Fed right now is all built on the optimistic notion that inflation is on its way down and is going to go away. And I think we're a little bit naive to think that it's that easy, folks. Because many people, my generation and below, have seen nothing like this. 
And for the first time ever, companies in my lifetime, right, are able to jack up the prices and pay none of the capital in terms of what it comes with, the hardships that people assign to those price hikes, right? You see higher laundry detergent prices in Publix, what do you say? Well, you probably either say, ah, Biden or, or Trump or something. You blame somebody else. You don't blame Tide for raising the prices, right? You blame politics, you blame COVID, you blame whatever it is, you blame the circumstances of the economy that is causing prices to go up. You're not putting the burden on the companies that are raising the prices. So the companies are able to raise the prices because they're not the ones being assigned the guilt for raising those prices. Now, you raise it as far as you can and then consumers won't be buying it and that's the level. But right now there's a weird deal going on that they're allowed to do it because consumers feel like the inflationary pressures are, are system wide and it's not that company's fault, it's the economy's fault. And I don't think that's going away, man. I don't think that's going away at all. I think that companies are still going to have enough cover to raise prices, and they may need to. And so it's a persisting round and round we go, and we'll see where we go from there. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back to the open. we got S&Ps down by one. Markets almost flat this morning. Coming into a break, right? Stay tuned. We'll be back. <coughs> Excuse me, in three minutes. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S P down about two points right now. VIX opens at fourteen eleven. Nasdaq one hundred barely holding on to gains right now. You're up. 13 points, 14,344, and you got the Dow off by 15 right now. Crude, up about 26 pennies, 72.78. We were above $73 briefly uh, in the pre-market session. You got gold trading higher as we got a weak dollar this morning. Gold up to 1975. You got to jump to the dollar, dollar index right now. Continuing to accelerate. You're almost off 50 basis points right there. Uh, 50 ticks in the dollar, 103.61 from where we were yesterday, above 104. Yeah, quite the sell-off. So we got a weaker dollar right now. And you jump to yields. Yeah, we got higher price, lower yield, weaker dollar. And we got a market that's uh, continuing just to chop around on a relatively very low basis in terms of where we are. You jump over to the 30-year. We're up to 126.16. We were trading at 125.27 before that jobs number. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. You talk about some moves yesterday, right? <whistles> Apple shares... Up four tenths percent today, but boy, you were up to 181 and you finished the session yesterday at almost 178. I mean, that alone, folks, is 50 billion dollars, let alone where we were at the top of the acceleration Monday of their worldwide developer conference. Today, Apple catches a bid. Microsoft yesterday, I was talking to my dad on the phone saying, Yeah, Microsoft just sold off ten dollars, man, from 334 to 324. And I think Microsoft has about seven billion shares outstanding. Yeah, 7.5 almost billion shares outstanding. So that's $75 billion Microsoft wipes out just from the spike high to where we are right now. I mean, crazy numbers, some of these FANG stocks in particular. You jump over to NVIDIA, NVIDIA shares, basically, uh, what well, was I going to say, flat. No, we're up 1%. Such volatility recently. NVIDIA, $20 it accelerated yesterday. And boy, be careful, man, because NVIDIA trades at some multiples where things can really get funky when you're talking about trading at future multiples that NVIDIA is in. That's where you can really get some vicious swings. We're up to 420, just like that. We're back to 377. Uh, you're still, what, 50 bucks above where we came into their earnings event? What did we, no, we came in at 300 on their earnings event a couple weeks ago. Yeah, already a couple weeks ago. I said that on my show yesterday. It seems crazy that that was two weeks ago that NVIDIA shocked the world. Did not, uh, doesn't seem like that was two weeks ago, but nonetheless, it was. We jump over to MetaShares. Meta, off about 1.3%. They were up to 276, just like that. They're 16 bucks off their high, man. How many shares they got outstanding? 2.5 billion. I mean, that company is only valued at $668 billion. Meanwhile, yeah, what are you, 16 bucks off the high, did I just say? Yeah, 16 bucks off the high for a company that's got 2.5 billion shares outstanding. That's $40 billion in market cap it just gave up. That's a, quite a market cap give up for a company only near about $700 billion in market cap. Uh, point being, we got some vicious swings in both directions. We gotta jump over to Tesla. They're in the mix as well usually. No real fade from them. They're pushing highs, man. Recent highs, that is, up to 225. Tesla, barely in the positive. But yeah, it was quite accel an acceleration for them the last couple of days. That's an hourly chart. We put it on a weekly. It's an interesting one. Where are we in this channel? We breaking out? Or are we testing the upper boundary line of that channel line? Yeah. Look at that, right? You back this up almost to the highs. Well, you could make a legit case, man, that you are up to the top of that channel line. And on the bottom side of that, it aligns pretty closely. Yeah, so an area to keep your eye on as this market chops around a bit. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index this morning. VIX right now, still above 14. But boy, quite a drop off, man. It'd be interesting to see. So as I mentioned, we get CPI data on Tuesday. Unless you get some type of a shocker, expect that, expect that the Fed will pause on Wednesday. But very interesting that for the first time, we get a Fed that's going to be potentially pausing on their hikes. And we got a CPI number the day before that they're somehow not data dependent on, right? And they're always data dependent, but it would have to be quite a shocker with the verbiage that they've put out to shock that market and do something other than pause. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we got to talk about Messi, right? Going to Miami. Now, here's the kicker. He turned down about a billion dollars from the Saudis. He's got quite a deal in Miami, though. He's getting some of the revenues from Apple. He's getting some of the revenues from Adidas in there as well, let alone his contract. And 
some of the, I mean, some of the tickets are already going for like 350, 400 bucks from 20 bucks from before that occasion. Interesting, this comes down right after Liv and the PGA have their merger. And it was so close, folks, that they, the Saudis thought they were going to get him, man. They had planes ready for him in one location. They had planes ready for his family in another location. And so it was a last second decision that he goes from Miami. And what I find interesting in a lot of these, right? Because a billion dollars is a billion dollars, man. Generational wealth, okay? Turning down that money is real. Now, Messi's got quite a deal. It might even be a better deal long term when you have revenue sharing with some of the biggest players out there, like Apple and Adidas. But what I don't, what never gets talked about because it's not an easy conversation to have, right? Is that you are doing business with Saudi Arabia and a lot of people do, okay? There's really not a lot of judgment. I wouldn't do that, but it's easy to say sitting on the sidelines, okay? Because somebody offers me a billion dollars, yeah, I, I might do that. In my situation, I might. But a lot of these people are doing that when they already have generational wealth. I mean, Messi's got so much money, his family's never going to spend that generations over. And once you do business with somebody like that, folks, in my head, don't think that it's as simple as that, man. When you're doing business with somebody like the Saudis, they give you a billion dollars. There's nothing to say that they might come back in five years and say, well, we need this too. And and guess what? The, the crown prince says so, and that's what has to happen. I, you know, that's a part of this where people are making decisions, doing business with the Saudis, and then you are, you know, I mean, that's how the mobsters used to do it, right? They do a business with you, then you then you come back, and then all of a sudden, they're, they're, you're in business with the mobsters, and there you go. Um, so, and, and you know, it's, it's, it is ethical to a degree, Duffy, but, you know, these guys on the PGA, man, you saw how they got screwed. You got to look out for number one as well, man, because, you know, Rory was looking out for everybody, and all he did was punish himself to the tune of $100 million, uh, and he got nothing for it. And the people he was supposedly in business with, the PGA, they were doing deals behind the back that that had no reflection of what he was doing. So you got to look out for yourself as well, but just even the selfish deal. Um, I don't, you know, it's like if you, if you said that the New York gangsters were going to give you a billion dollars to allow them to start a soccer team and you'd be the player on it, right? Wouldn't you really think about what happened after that billion dollars and how that might go bad? That's what I never understand that gets talked about. I mean, you know, that Khashoggi thing is real, man. He was a U.S. resident abroad, and they just sent a team over to chop him up, and and, and, and that was it. So that's that's part of the business. With uh, Anyway, so he comes to Miami. I think it's great, man. Um I'm not a huge soccer fan just because I'm American. I watch American sports. It's just becoming. But I love playing with a kid. As a kid, I play it with my kids, and it's great. It's huge in Florida, of course, you know, as a sport for children. And, yeah, it's great that now we're going to have some uh, some Miami action with our man Messi bumping up the MLS because soccer's great, especially kids, man. Kids love soccer. You run around, why not? And uh, Miami, only about three and a half hours from where we are in Florida. Not bad. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back, talking markets. We'll talk a little bit of S&P trading with our man Tim Ord coming up at 4 o'clock today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets chopping around pretty much where we kicked off right now. S&Ps are flat, 42.74 right now. And boy, you talk about a run, though, right? We put this on a three-year weekly. You're talking about lows in October of 35.02. We're 770 points above that level, man. You got to love it. 42.73, pushing recent highs. The highs of last August, you're talking about 43.27. So we got right near that number, man. Uh, and as I stated before many times, especially interesting. Excuse me, especially interesting when you look at where we are in this chart, considering, excuse me, we came into the hiking cycle in March of 2022 at a price of about 4200 We're going to end that cycle at a price of about 4200 We went up to 4600 We went down to 3500 in the mix. Uh, but 15 months later, when the Fed is eventually going to pause, at least for a meeting, we're within about 1% to 2% of where we were coming into that. And if you told me back then, if you told anybody, right, if you said, hey, inflation still persisting at almost 5% on the PCE core, we're actually ticking up. The Fed's been hiking for 10 straight meetings since March. And where do you think the market's going to be in that number? Also, you got the war still raging on between Russia and the Ukraine. We're just sitting right there and we got crude trading at $72. Not that bad, to put it lightly. Okay, with that in mind, folks, tonight, 4 o'clock, our man Tim Ward. This is going to be an awesome event. Please, I encourage you to check it out, 4 till 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Tim Ward is going to be in there for a trading methodology webinar focusing solely on the S&P, folks, okay? Uh, he's an award-winning market analyst. He's been out there for 35 years. He's been working with my dad for many decades, man. Uh, came back, was with our man Dave White. Has been talking to my dad on the air for a while now, a couple months. Now he's got a webinar going on. This one is on the S&P, folks. It's from 4 till 6 tonight to two-hour webinar. He's going to have a 90-minute presentation followed by a 30-minute question and answer discussion period. And he also has a gold webinar coming up a week from today. They're separate webinars because he uses completely separate tools, indicators, and charting packages that are available on most mainstream charting services, trading services, and he's going to be in there tonight, man. And he's talking about whether it's sentiment indicators, how to find market bottoms, market tops. If you've been listening to him on my dad's show, man, he has had some amazing calls in this market talking about 
the bottoms, talking about panic, talking about this next leg higher, and everything's pretty much followed through so far. So you can check this out on the front page, TFNN. You click on the link. You can see what he's going to be talking about in here. Okay, he has all, both webinars. You can sign up for both webinars at 495, or you can sign up for either one for 295 in the S&P webinar tonight, 4 o'clock. And with the way this market's working, man, I'm looking forward to this webinar, and it should be a good one. Uh, Jacob's been testing out with Tim. He's all set in the den. And, uh, yeah, all you got to do is be in our Discord server, folks. We'll give you a tag once you sign up. It'll be right in there, easy to use. And if you're not in there, you just sign up. We send you a link. It takes about a few minutes. But please, don't wait until 4 o'clock tonight to sign up, okay? Because we do need to tag your account if you're not in our Discord server, Tiger's Den. We need to just send you a link and get you in there. So it does take a few minutes. So if you're planning to go, please sign up right now. Sign up throughout the day as early as you can so we can make sure we get you in that room, we get you tagged. And it will be archived as well, 4 to 6 p.m. So you can watch it as much as you want. That two-hour archive, two hour archive will be available to all subscribers. All right. The last part of that messy one, which I thought was interesting and it talks about, is it's quite a downshift from what he's used to playing in. So where he's going to be playing right now, now Miami. So you got Beckham is an owner part owner, minority, of this team. Okay, so you're going to Beckham over there. He's in Miami. He wants to build a legacy, of course. They talk about in here that they just signed a 99-year lease, okay, even before Messi. You have Inter-Miami's fortunes had started shifting. You have the owner and Beckham got Miami City commissioners to agree to a 99-year lease last year to redevelop a city-owned country club into a privately financed property that would include a soccer stadium, hotel, office park, retail space, and public park, okay? But what is going to happen there is that that stadium has not broken ground yet. Probably not going to exist while Messi's there, considering, what do they take, three, four years, something like that, to build a monumental stadium to that degree. He's going to be playing in... The DRVPNK Stadium. Drive Pink Stadium. What is that? Does anybody know what Drive Pink Stadium is? I mean, amazing they got that stadium, but it's a small stadium in Fort Lauderdale. They share it with the Florida High School Athletic Association for state championships, and it holds 18,000 people compared to where he was playing with Barcelona for 100,000 people. Uh, but pretty cool, man. And just from a sports fan in america and it's big and it's big in florida man for sure because you got so many kids playing soccer year round but yeah pretty cool he does that but quite a downshift to eighteen thousand. but yeah he's gonna get some of the revenue and they talk in here as well in terms of apple okay apple just forged a 2.5 billion dollar 10-year deal with major league soccer to show the games on its tv plus he's gonna share in that revenue and adidas is going to uh he's gonna share in the adidas revenue that they sell as well so good for him man yeah. All right. What else we got going on? Yeah. New York, man. Sending out some some white light and some white air. Maybe just clean air, not white air to the New Yorkers, man. You're going to be stuck with that air, air, it looks like, until Tuesday right now. It's only Thursday. Uh, and it may persist. And these are some of the deals that are going to be happening now, man, as you got those fires raging. Now it's in Canada. And, yeah, we're fortunate in Florida. We deal with our own woes. We're coming into hurricane season. No matter where you live, folks, everybody's got something they're dealing with, all right? Whether it's tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, snowstorms, hail, air quality, etc. But, yeah, this is a tough one. And, and hopefully it's not the, the new norm, but it seems like that may be the case. And pretty remarkable that just like that, you got a whole city full of smog, and it's going to be that way for a week or so as you come into summer in June. And it's just the beginning of summer, man. You know, if those you're dealing with wildfires, these things, you know, it's only going to get hotter. It's only going to get drier as we go throughout the summer. All right, what else we got? Let's check around to some of the fang stocks as we jump around to this final break. We jump over to Amazon shares. All right, this was. Maybe we get a little bit of a difference of yesterday's action, man, with what we have going on. Because, boy, Amazon was another huge sell-off yesterday. Amazon traded down $6 from where it was at the open to where it was near the close. We're up by 2% today, but we're still almost $4 off of where it was trading at the highs of yesterday morning. See how Microsoft is doing, clawing back some of those losses? No, not so much, man. Microsoft still below 324 right now, flat on the day. Even after their sell-off, we jump over to Apple shares. Apple up about 2 tenths percent right now. 
Tesla holding up well, up about seven tenths. Let's see how some of the banks are trading right now. JP Morgan down seven tenths percent. Bank of America down a percent right now. Wells Fargo down about eight tenths. We check in on the airlines. American, AAL. Yeah, flat. Cruise ships, Carnival off 1.6. And we got to talk a little GameStop, folks. We'll talk a little GameStop when we get back. Uh, down 18% as they got a new chairman, Mr. Cohen, trading at $21. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Yeah, we're jumping over to Visa. Visa trading lower today as potential legislation yesterday had some acceleration. Our man Kevin Hinks was talking to us yesterday, alerting us that there was a market maker expected move in these equities with potential legislation out there in Congress that could limit some of the fees they had. A uh, little bit of weakness again in Visa today, down about a percent before you take a look at this thing longer term, right? Great stock, man. Just plows higher. And I imagine no matter what happens to their fees, they're going to be okay going forward in a large way. You jump over to MasterCard, pretty similar chart, right? Higher prices we go, man. And you're pushing almost highs. MasterCard down another percent today using uh, moving pretty much in lockstep with Visa. Lower prices yesterday, continuing those lower prices today. But guess what? We got a lower market as well, man. You get the S&P below 4270. We're trading right now at 4266. Yeah, jumping back to Coinbase. 
Coinbase right now down about 2%, trading at $52. Whoever bought those $50 puts, uh, what can they get? What can they get for them right now? 54 pennies. They bought them at 18 cents, man. Imagine that, right? What a lesson. We're going to take the final minute I have in this program of talking about this, man. What a lesson, right? No matter what was going on, I started off the program, folks, talking about that there was probably insider trading going on. My words, okay? Uh, talking about a trader that on Monday at – or Tuesday, let's get it, at 10.36 a.m. on Monday – traded 4,800 contracts. Every contract, folks, is 100 shares. So that's 480,000 shares potentially, okay, of Coinbase at 50 bucks. They paid 18 cents. Well, the stock needed to move about $12 to be in the money. And even that trade is potentially going to lose money because you're still out of the money by $2.50 with one day to go. 